Hello friends, it's Dave here from Save Decks and we have got the N64 controller for Nintendo Switch Online and I'm going to do an unboxing for you and compare it to a few other controllers but before we begin I just want to show something off and ask you guys a question. So a couple of years ago this got released for the Nintendo Switch, the Super Nintendo controller, I did an unboxing for it but I did another video for it which I'll put in the top pinned comment as a link if you haven't seen it already where I tried out a bunch of Nintendo Switch games with this controller just to see if it would work and it was quite a fun video to do and it's done like a couple of thousand views which is good for this channel so if you guys want to see me do a similar video uh, with this controller just put in the comments any Switch games that you'd like to see me uh, play with the N64 controller anything you think would be funny or awkward to do uh, the more awkward the better really so yeah, make sure you subscribe as well to not miss that video when I eventually get round to it. So, let's uh, take a look at the N64 controller. There's not really much um, interesting on the box there, so we'll just open this up. And that plastic thing fell down. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this thing here. Do you know it's been so long since I've held an N64 controller properly. So let's get this out of here. So, so this is the weirdly designed N64 controller. You've got your D-pad, that feels good. You've got your shoulder buttons. So analog stick, I'm not, I'm not actually gonna press that yet because uh, I'll tell you about the analog stick in a bit. But A and B, A and B, C buttons. Starts. There we go. It feels all nice, but analog stick and oh, okay. So I have a sort of weird thing about the analog stick with the N64 because obviously it was the first time they did an analog stick, and as you can see how it is there, it's not like modern analog sticks. And I'll show you because I'll compare this to a real N64 controller if I bring that on. So as you can see, this is the old one. I'm going to get rid of this box so I can actually move my hands a bit better. Um, pretty much identical, isn't it? Look, which one's the real one? Which one's the switch one? Uh, the one, the one with the wire is probably the old one. So the thing is, you can notice the difference with the analog sticks. There, this one is a lot more worn, and as you can see, if I shake that, that stays slightly. I shake that, that wobbles all over the place. So the problem here is, this is pretty much unusable. I've got three N64 controllers and they're all in this state. The sticks are just like that. And they do, and uh, basically when playing, this was like a year or two ago, playing Mario 64 with this analog stick, you can't beat Bowser because you're rotating. It just doesn't rotate. Mario will not swing Bowser around fast enough. So I've, and I've basically tried to show a friend uh, Diddy Kong Racing a few years ago this was and we couldn't get very far like even with different controllers because this just hurts my thumb after before long this this analog stick is just not good anymore i can't use that so i'm glad i can actually hold a n64 controller with a analog stick that feels better than the one i just showed you but still i prefer the newer designs i would love to see them just have released an n64 controller for the N64 games but have the analog stick be like on the Pro Controller. Uh, but there's another reason I got this. I'm going to show you because obviously people might want to know what's on the top. So uh, let's have a look. So on the top you've got a home button. That's pretty cool they put that because um, th this doesn't have a home button. I mean it has the, Z the ZR and ZL buttons but no home buttons. So that's pretty cool. There's a sync button to sync it up. And what else we got? So ZR is there. But there's no ZL because the Z button there will be in place of ZL. Oh, and then that's and the capture button as well. Well, they actually included that. And then uh, that's just for show. But obviously on the old controls, that's where you put the rumble pack or controller pack for saving some games. Um, so, yeah. So that's how uh, the N64 controller looks. So I'm not going to try it just yet for a video. Like I said, I'm going to save that for trying out numerous Switch games. So the main reason I got this, and I'm kind of annoyed about this because um, obviously here's the Pro Controller, just for comparison if you um, don't know how big an N64 controller is, it's uh, about the same width there. Um, height wise the N64 controller is obviously longer in the middle 
but the sides are pretty much the same and um oops, if i can get that right so depth wise n64 controller is quite a, a beefier thing there isn't it so what i was going to say is obviously there's only one analog stick newer controllers will have two uh playstation 2 started that or yeah the first playstation started that didn't they um so in place in the N64 you would have uh, obviously that for moving around and the C buttons would be for your camera controls and so I thought I'm gonna need one of these for the N64 games on Switch because from the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console using a dual analog although I don't know why I'm holding that because it's actually the classic controller I should be showing off that's what I used on the Wii and Wii U that one there this was not very uh, good for N64 games, not not all of them, some of them. So for say Mario 64 it was fine because you used the C buttons to move the camera um, there and that was just substituted with the right analog stick and that was fine, it wasn't ideal but it still worked. But when you're playing uh, Donkey Kong 64 is where I experienced this, on some of the games um, like that and Banjo-Kazooie the C buttons are to do certain moves. So for Banjo Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64, you would have to hold down the Z button and then press one of these to activate a certain move. And obviously on here it works brilliantly, uh, but on there, not so much because instead of the C buttons, you are pressing an analog stick. And quite often you'd press like, uh, hold Z and then press left to make the, uh, the gun come out in Donkey Kong. But in its place, I'd just sort because of, you're in the gameplay, you want to get your gun out, do that, and then suddenly I'd slip or something, or sometimes I'd just do it left, and Donkey would just play the bongos, which is what you do with a uh, C up instead. So that's why I was like, for that, and especially with like Ocarina of Time being on there and Banjo Kazooie coming, I am going to need these as buttons because that's just how it works. But annoyingly, Nintendo have got a workaround for that because on this controller. Obviously, you can use the right stick as the C buttons, but as you know, you've got the A and B like on the N64 there, but the X and Y didn't exist. Now, what they've done is um, they've mapped, um, I think it's C left there and C down there, which is just the most random of mapping, but you know, you don't need those buttons anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if you hold down ZR, which is a button not on the N64 controller, so that button does nothing in the games. So instead of just leaving it as nothing, if you hold down ZR, um, these buttons become the C buttons. So if you're playing, so obviously something like Mario 64, yeah, you can run around pressing A to jump, B for your attacks and stuff, but you suddenly need to move the camera. Uh, it might be more comfortable to use the analog stick anyway because it's just moving camera. But holding that, if you just hold that down, you can just move the camera like that. But I think that will be very useful in Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64 because you're going to have to hold the trigger down anyway to do those moves. So just you can hold both down. But in Ocarina of Time as well, you pressing those directions for those items is going to be awkward. So yeah, just hold the trigger down and press the buttons. That's what you do, but it's all right. I've got this now, so I can just use that. Use those C buttons. So we do want to, at some point, stream Ocarina of Time. So uh, we'll get around to that at some point, but I don't know how soon we can do that. So anyway, that is um, what an N64 controller looks like. But I'm going to bring up another console quickly on the topic of those C buttons. And that is the uh, Xbox Series S I've got. And I've been playing Rare Replay on that, and one of those games is Jet Force Gemini. Now, if Jet Force Gemini comes to the N64, I think this is going to be the, the way to play it, because unlike Perfect Dark, they didn't update Jet Force Gemini with dual analog controls. It's still as if you've got the single analog. But the thing there is, you press C up to jump in Jet Force Gemini, which is uh, not very comfortable, because A and B is just to switch your items one way or the other. And it's that's to jump and that's to crouch. And on buttons, it works okay because you're pushing a button. But on here, on this controller here, you have to flick the analog stick upwards to jump. And that is just that just doesn't work very well. But at least if you have a pro controller, you don't have to hold the trigger and then press that to jump because uh, you can remap the controls, can't you, on the Switch? So you can make it so that 
swapping your items, maybe put them to something else, then have like A to jump, B to crouch, and then the shooting with the with uh, Z or R or whatever. That could work. Who knows? So anyway, thank you so much for watching there. That is the N64 controller unboxed and compared to a few others and uh, a little rant about how uh, some of these retro games control, but um, they've got workarounds on some of them, so that's something. So yeah, I'm glad I got this and this actually feels so good to hold an N64 controller. So make sure you've clicked that like button, make sure you subscribe and we've got a new Mario Party coming out, haven't we? Maybe this will work on that. But we'll save that for the future video, eh? <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. And for those of you who might have been wondering, yes, this is the Lego Mario 64 set. Have a look at this. that great